so this case uh, that we got right here is a Lexar flash drive of some sort and um, after talking to the uh, person who sent it in sent me, he sent me a few pictures of what it looked like uh, and I'll show you guys what we're going to be dealing with today so this is a broken flash drive that, that is here for the repair and this is the one that he was able to find to act as a no, as a donor the donor is in pretty rough state I wasn't expecting that from the looks of things right there um, that board might be smashed actually if we look at this pad on the donor yeah we can tell that it clearly is disconnected that's still good but this is broken we're gonna need to patch that up uh, things are not as bad as <laughs> they were for the patient unit the patient unit is smashed to bits uh, with that being said it's still uh, a fixable device from what I can tell let's say this was the only flash drive on the planet and there was no uh, options for obtaining the donor then uh, I'm pretty sure that there is a way to get the content out of the device without performing a chip off recovery chip off recovery would be an option but I would leave it as a last option one first let's get uh, the donor fixed and uh, to a point where it mounts and works on its own if this uh, crack on the side isn't affecting its functionality we'll be able to uh, um, use that controller most likely to accommodate the memory from the patient and um, that is going to be relatively easy Since uh, it came in in a bare shape like this without uh, uh, the enclosure, something to line it up when it goes into a, a USB port on uh, our device is going to be a, <laughs> a lot more help. So I'm just going to drop a regular connector on there. The only thing I want to confirm is the orientation. So um, if we see that this pad goes this pad goes into this fat trace then three vehicles right there we flip the unit upside down to see what's on the bottom it hits this resistor this is our power line so we're gonna get five volts to this end and uh, that's obviously gonna be the power input so the connector is gonna just go this face up is it for soldering for now um, let's connect the deep spars uh, USB stabilizer plug that in here if we power on the unit we're getting 60 milliamps and we, if we look in the log our device mounts it's 29.8 gigs if I run our studio uh, we have a Lexar device showing up here and going into hex view 
just make sure that everything is reading so yeah this is fat32 and there is actually data on this device somewhere uh, this isn't critical data because it's a donor device we're gonna just um, power down the unit this was done just so that we can confirm that the donor piece is functional now that we got that sorted out we will be looking at swapping these two memory chips first um, before touching the controller controller may not need to be swapped out because they are really are alike and uh, maybe they function in the exact same way turn on the fume extraction for now I'll take off the connector just so that it's not interfering connector removed uh, I'll be able to just mount it up in the jig this way this is probably the optimal spot because if we go sideways uh, the claws that hold the PCB in place and prevent it from getting out uh, may apply pressure to the chip and if we start heating up the chip when the pressure is applied to them uh, some of the solder will melt first but some will take longer and when the bond between the chip and the board gets down to only a few pads the force of the pressure may break them off so that's very uh, important to prevent from happening Both sides are done and our donor is prepped. Now I'm just going to take the memory off of these. using this soldering paste recently I'm almost down to 0.5 <laughs> milliliter and uh, this stuff is amazing they sent me a bunch of different uh, types so different thickness different uh, mixes um, some are more liquid some are more solid but overall the one I found that works best for me guys is the one that you mark with an S so if you can hit me up let me know what this is Since we're doing two chips and I only want to use one single stencil you want to keep that stencil cool because next time if you apply it over the chip and put the paste on a warm stencil you know what what it's gonna do to the flux it's gonna start to get wet and you're gonna botch the job you're gonna have to redo it
I think that's it. Let's pop this in here. Power up the screen. And we're getting 0 0.06, which is great. Capacity comes up, the device mounts. If we refresh the screen. We still have the Lexar showing, I hope. And if we go into the hex view, yet again we're able to see the drive's content.